Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating seamless repeating patterns in Procreate. So I have my Procreate gallery open here. I'm going to tap to create a brand new document. I'm going to create a document that's 2048 by 2048 pixels. That's around about 7 inches at 300 dpi, so it's a pretty good size for a pattern. Now I already have the element I'm going to be using on the clipboard. So I'm going to the wrench icon here and I'll choose paste and that just pastes it into position. Just going to move it into the middle and just resize it a little bit. The design we're going to be making in Procreate is going to be a brick pattern. So it's a little bit more sophisticated than a plain grid pattern. But before we do this, we need to have a look at a couple of things that are specific to Procreate that we need to understand. I'm going to tap the Transform tool up here that selects the content that I just pasted in. I'm going to move it up to the top corner of the document and tap away again. Now if I tap to reselect that portion of the image, you'll see that by the process of moving the element over the edge of the artboard, we've actually ended up cropping it. And so you need to be really aware of that in Procreate, that you don't move things too far, because as soon as you move things too far, you're cropping the elements away from it, and you don't want to be doing that. So I'm just tapping with two fingers to bring it back to the center of the document. I'm actually going to make this just a little bit smaller. The other thing that you need to be aware of with Procreate is that you can't move things a certain distance. So there are no sort of values where you can pick up a shape and say move it 200 in one direction or another. So placing this element as we're going to need to do in the four corners of this artboard is going to be a little bit difficult because when you're making patterns, every pixel counts. If you're a pixel out, then that's one pixel too many out. So we have to find a way of actually moving it and understanding how we're moving it so that we make sure that everything lines up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this donut shape and we're going to put it on a shape or pair it with a shape that is the exact same size as the artboard. And then when we move it, we'll have an edge that we can use to line up. Now the problem with that is that when you have two edges alongside, it's going to be a little bit difficult to see that they actually are aligned. So what we're going to do in addition to sticking this donut to another layer that is filled with data the same size as the artboard is we're going to also make that layer semi-transparent. So when it's layered on top of another layer that's also semi-transparent, we'll see some additional color if they're not lined up perfectly. If they're lined up perfectly, we won't see the stripe, if you like. And so that's the way that you're going to create patterns in Procreate until such time as Procreate actually allows us to move elements a certain distance. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to the Layers palette. I have a background layer which is white. I've got the layer that is my donut. Now I need one donut for the middle and I'm going to need four donuts for the outside. But for now, I'm just going to make one of those. So I'm going to duplicate this one. So there's my second donut. And then I need a substrate, a thing that is the same size as this document, filled with a color, with a bit of reduced transparency that I can stick my donut to, if you like. We're not actually going to put the donut, we're not going to merge it, but we're just going to group them together. So we need a new layer and I'm going to fill mine with white. So let's just go and get white. Tap here and I'll choose fill layer. So it's filled with white. Now I want it to be around about something like about 50% opacity. Doesn't matter what opacity you're using, but it does need to be a reduced opacity. That's really critical. Now we're going to group the donut and this white filled layer. So I'm just going to pick this up. I'm going to place it just over the top of the white filled layer. In fact, that didn't work, so let me pick up the white filled layer and let's put that in there. That did work. I want a new group and I want it ordered so the donuts on top and the semi-transparent white filled layer is underneath. So I'm going to close up that group. So that group is going up here. Well, I need one for here, one for here, and one for here. So I'm going to duplicate the entire group. And I'm going to do that three times. So now I have all four elements I need. Now it's going to help me if I actually name these where they're headed for. So this one's going to the right top. And this one will go to the right bottom. And then we'll have one for the left top. 
and left bottom. Now that just helps me ensure that I know where each one of them is going. Now we're going to start with the left bottom. So I'm going to turn the visibility off of all the other layers and only the one that I can see is the left bottom and it's going over here. So let me just tap on the transform tool and you can see that we have selected the entire artboard. And so I'm just going to move it. Now it's really critical when you move it that you don't resize it. If you think you've resized it all, you need to undo it and start again because you can't have it resized. So I'm going to tap here again on the transform tool. This is approximately in the position I need it in. Now I've got this layer in the middle visible. I'm going to turn that off too. Now you can see immediately that I have a problem and the problem is that I can't see where this transparent white is. So what I need to do is underneath these four layers, I need to put something that is going to show the white up if you like. And so that's going to be just a colored fill layer. So I'm just going to add a new layer and I'm going to fill it with a color. Doesn't matter what color I use, I'm going to use black but as long as it was pretty dark, that would be just fine. Now we can see the edges of the shape that we just put in position in the left bottom corner. To save it from moving, what we're going to do is we're going to lock it down. So I'm just going to lock it. So this is locked in position, it can't move. Let's turn the next one on, which is this left top one. I'm going to also select it, that's really important. I'm going to target the transform tool, everything is selected here, and I'm going to move it up into the top corner. Now this is where the chance of losing the edge of our shape becomes really important. What I've done is I've moved it nearly to where it needs to be but not quite. There's an overlap here and it's coming too far on this direction which means that some of this eventually is going to be cut off. It needs to be cut off but you can see that I've made a generous placement. So what I'm going to do is just tap on the transform tool. So this is my first move. Now I'm going to go in really really close. So this is what I found is the most successful way of getting these patterns out is just taking it slowly and getting each step exactly right. So what we'll do now is tap the transform tool. Now it's going to be easier for us to put it in the right position because we're working at a really large size. When you think you've got it in the right position, tap this transform tool again and you should see this. You can see that I don't have any bumps on this line and I don't have any white line across there. So that piece is perfectly in position. If it wasn't perfectly in position, I would tap with my two fingers, undo it and go back and move it until it was in the perfect position. This one's perfect, I'm going to lock it down. Once it's locked down, now I can go and resize my shape. And just in case your fingers don't work properly or in case you're running the risk of resizing things, just lock it down before you do that and it's never going to go wrong. So I'm really trying to protect you from the things that can go wrong and make these patterns more difficult to make than they already are. And I think they're pretty tricky anyway. So left top is done, I'm going to turn its visibility off. I'm going to do the right bottom, so that's this one here. I'm going to turn its visibility on. Tap the transform tool and start moving it. Take it nearly to where it needs to go, but in fact not quite as far as it needs to go. I've got space to move it here and here, so I'm safe. Now let's zoom in really, really close. All I need to see is this area here because that's going to help me align it. Transform tool. Move it, tap, it went in the right position. As soon as it's in the right position, let's go and lock it. And then we'll start sizing our artboard. Because it really is risky that you're going to move it or resize it if you don't lock it down before you do that. So let's see what we've got. Right bottom, left bottom. We need to do the right top. So I'm going to turn the left bottom off and turn the right top on, target it goes the transform tool. We know where it's going. Up here, hit the transform tool again. Now go and see this area that we're really concerned about. This is going to help us place it in the exact position. Target the transform tool, move it into position. Now I'm going to do something wrong here. So if you see this, that's incorrect. It's not right and you can't just move it back because you're going to be missing a part on the edge. So what you have to do is tap with your fingers and bring it back. Now go back and try and move it into position. The other thing that you might see is this. 
One, I've got a line across here, so that's telling me it's not in the right position. And here I've moved it too far. This line here should be perfectly straight. And so if any of those things happen, you've made a mistake. Tap with your fingers to undo it, make sure you undo it, and then try again. But really, when it's this size, when it's this big on the screen, it's really, really hard to make a mistake. I'm going to lock it, and then let's size it back down. Now we'll turn on all of our paces and see what we've got. Now these are perfectly positioned to make our pattern. The first one wasn't moved perfectly into the corner. That doesn't matter. This is going to work perfectly as a sophisticated diagonal pattern. But there's bits here that we don't want. We don't want this gray. So first of all, we're going to get rid of the black here. So we're going to just delete that entirely. In each of these groups, we have got a piece of the donut and a semi-transparent white filled element. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the piece of the donut and we're going to move it out of the group. Then we're going to delete the entire group. Open this up. This one's actually locked, so I'm going to unlock it. Bring out the piece of the donut and then get rid of the rest of the group. Open it up, unlock it, take the piece of donut out, delete the rest of the group because we don't need it. Unlock it. Take the piece of donut out. Now I just made a mistake and I ended up putting two pieces on top of each other so they formed a new group. To get them out I'm just going to make sure that I'm a bit more careful this time and not put them on top of each other. So I've got all four pieces out so I can get rid of everything else here. I'm going to turn back on the middle donut because that's pretty important. I'm just going to make sure that this middle donut is in the right position. I think it's a bit low because my pieces started a bit low so I'm going to move it up a little bit. Now I think that looks pretty good so I'm done. This is now a seamless repeating pattern swatch. It's the sort of thing that you could upload to Spoonflower or you could use in another application. So this is what I do at this stage. I go to this wrench icon and I click here on share and I make sure that I save it in a non-lossy format. I don't need the layers, so it doesn't worry me that I'm using TIFF, but you could use PSD if you prefer, and then use it in Photoshop. So I've saved it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the image to my camera roll. And then from there, I can email it or I can do other things with it. But I just want it saved as a pattern swatch element, a usable pattern swatch element. For me, that's a TIFF file. I want to save it somewhere where I get access to it. Now that we've finished in Procreate, we can swing across and see how we could use it, for example, in Photoshop or upload it to the web. Now I've just swung across to Photoshop and I've opened the image that I sent myself. This is the one that we made in class. With it open, I can create it as a pattern by selecting edit and then define pattern. Now I've already done that, so I don't need to do it again. But what I also did after I stopped videoing was I created another version of the pattern. It looks identical to this one, doesn't it? Well, it's a pixel off. And I just want to show you what a pixel off is going to look like and why we need to be really careful in Procreate to make sure that we are not a pixel off, that everything is dead accurate. So let's swing across to where I've actually put these patterns in a document. All I did was I chose layer, new fill layer, and then pattern, and I loaded up the patterns that we made. Now this is the one that we made in the video and it's perfect. There's no problems with this pattern at all. When we zoom in, we're going to see that each one of these shapes is perfect. Now you need to check two shapes. The reason for this is that one of them was in the center of the pattern. So one of these is not even going to risk being wrong, but one of them is going to risk being wrong. And so you want to check everything. Now I could help myself here by just shrinking the size down to a bit less, maybe 40% and just test it again, just to make sure that I'm not seeing any errors, but I'm not, it's perfect pattern. But let's have a look and see what one pixel off looks like. Here is the one that's one pixel off. This one's fine because this was the one in the center of the design we had in Procreate. This is the one that we made a pattern out of, and this is the one that I moved slightly just to show you what one pixel off looks like. And it's enough to be really, really alarming. You can see here it's off, you can see here it's off, you can see here in the middle of the sort of sprinkle on the donut it's off, and here it's off. 
And so being off is going to be really, really obvious, which is why you need to be so careful when you're making these patterns in Procreate to make sure that you're getting them dead accurate. And you will want to check them somewhere where you can zoom in really, really close. So find an application online or use Photoshop if you haven't had Photoshop to check them because that's going to be critical because you do not want to be doing something like selling or creating fabric with a pattern that's off by this amount. Now, in addition to checking our pattern in Photoshop, I also said that I would show you how you would upload it to Spoonflower. Well, I'm in Spoonflower. I've already logged in and I've gone to design and then upload. I've selected the pattern TIFF file and I've clicked to upload. And so we're going to see what it looks like inside Spoonflower. I just don't recommend that you check for accuracy in Spoonflower because you're probably not going to get a close enough look at your file to be able to determine whether you've got it pixel perfect. I would suggest that you use some other application to do so. So the upload has now finished and it opens automatically in this view in Spoonflower. And you can see that while it's easy to see how the pattern is going to look, actually zooming in and having a really good look at the pattern isn't possible in this view. So you will want to have checked it in another application first. And when you do open it in Spoonflower, the repeat that you want is just a basic repeat because we've taken care of creating it as a half brick pattern already. And so it's it's just a basic repeat once it gets to spoon flour. I hope this video has been of help to you to see how you can create really reliable patterns in Procreate. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you will be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name is Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.